Sometimes it's important to remember why we do scale modeling, be it for the love of history, building things, our mental health, or simply to have fun. So in this video, I'm doing something a little bit different to normal, building a 172nd scale Spitfire in custom Models for Heroes Air Racer colors. Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here, and join me on the workbench as I show you how I created this fun little side project. First up, I'm going to need a kit to build, and why look any further than the ever popular Spitfire Mark I from Airfix. I've built a number of these in various paint schemes over the years, so this should be a fairly quick and pain-free build. I'll remove the parts I need using my cutters and then sand down any rough areas, excess plastic or flash with a sanding stick. To start with, I'm going to paint the pilot figure. Tamiya XF15 flat flesh acrylic was carefully painted onto his face. Then Humbrol 25 blue was used on his flying suit. Vallejo English uniform is about right for the colour of his flying helmet, boots and gloves, whilst Tamiya flat yellow was used on the life jacket. When the paint was dry, Vallejo black wash was applied to the figure to help add some contrast and shadow to the details. I'm going to use Tamiya extra thin cement throughout this build and the first parts to be glued together were the seat onto the cockpit bulkhead frame, then the cockpit floor. The control column was glued into its slot, then the control panel was added on as well. The cockpit assembly was cemented inside one of the fuselage halves and so too were these gas bottles. Hataka interior grey green was then airbrushed onto all the internal areas. When that was dry, cockpit details like the gas canisters were painted in gunmetal, the seat cushions in leather and other parts in black. The decal for the control panel was added at this stage. Sadly, the pilot didn't quite fit in the cockpit, so I had to cut his feet off before he could also be glued into place. With that done, I closed up the two fuselage halves, taking care to make sure everything fit correctly inside and the two halves lined up correctly. I then sped through the rest of the build, joining all the parts together as per the instructions. Whilst I'm doing this, I think it's time to hear a little bit about Models for Heroes, the charity on which I will base the paint scheme for this model. So here's both Malcolms from Models for Heroes when they gave a presentation at the Airfix Factory Day last year. So essentially it's about the people involved. So um, we support veterans and emergency services and it's the people involved that we are focusing on. We don't really focus on the kits, it's the people, the time spent with each other, helping each other, um, having a social interaction. And that is the important part of what Models for Heroes is about, is the people. Uh, we support the armed forces, no emergency service personnel in the UK. Um, the, the modelling that we do, we focused on it being good for well-being. It's, it improves your skill development as well, your fine motor skills. Um, obviously, social interaction, meeting people, getting out of the house, chatting and, and, and talking about things that excite you, like Spitfires. It's really important. Um, behavioural intervention, so that's a, a, a clinical term from the... Um, uh, well, I've forgotten the name of them now. But, um, occupational therapists use that term. That's it. Um, and that is about changing behaviour. And uh, if you're stuck at, how, at your home and you're, you're not getting out and you're in a kind of a loop, but changing your behaviour and getting you out to somewhere um, is something part of that. And obviously inviting someone to come and build a Spitfire with you is quite a draw. So that's how we kind of help people get out the house and, and, and support them that way. Um, and then further interest, so all the history and development and, and of, of, of aircraft and tanks and armor and all that kind of thing, it, there's a lot of history involved. So it's researching your model that you're building. There is an extra level to, all the, to the hobby. And obviously then you've got figure painting. If you're doing a, a railway, you've got electronics, you've got lots of things going on that you need to learn. It's not just about how to glue two pieces of plastic together. Now we're talking about the grants. Where Models for Heroes get their money from? Because it is a voluntary organisation, we rely on people donating to us and we do actually apply for some grants. It's a good idea to give them mental health first aid training. So we partnered with a lady called Sasha, who's in the RF, and she's helped us do this and we do this with the volunteers. And we managed to get a grant of £9,000 from the National Lottery. 
Next one, we're currently working with this at the moment and coming up with how we're going to do it. The Red Arrows Trust gave us £5,000 for people that are already beneficiaries of Models for Heroes and say, oh look, I want to, I've done with, as an example, I'm done with painting by hand. I'd like to learn airbrushing, but I can't afford an airbrush. So we'll do a grant scheme where we, Models for Heroes, will go out and buy them a compressor and an airbrush. Or going back to what Mark was saying earlier about kits, oh, I want to build a kit, that I use, an aircraft I want to fly in, but I can't afford to pay for that kit because it's a full resin kit or something like that. So we discuss, make sure it's within the guidelines and we'd provide it to them. And finally, as you can see, we were lucky enough with COVID to get a £30,000 grant from the Alphonse Convenant and that paid for setting up online sessions through COVID. Because what we found that we didn't have, we didn't have access to people and the beneficiaries had nowhere to go to do these sessions. And this is, so we set up online ones and we're now running, what, I think it's eight online sessions a day? Uh, one a day. Yeah, one a day. About eight a week. Eight a week. <laughs> and that still carried on post COVID. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, um, uh, so one of the things uh, is incredibly beneficial, obviously, is model making. And once um, support workers and therapists and that found out about what we were doing uh, past um, uh, working within the uh, armed forces was the NHS. And when they're supporting um, the veterans, um, they also send us referrals. Um, so uh, somebody who would benefit particularly from a hobby, um, uh, if it's that model making, they'll contact us and we'll do a clinical referral for them. Um, and that involves phoning them up and asking what they're interested in, whether they've built models before. So in 2018, we were fortunate enough to get the armed confident, armed forces confident. And I think, please correct me if I'm right not, even though we don't have any employer employees, our volunteers are classed as employees, so we fall under the bracket to become an armed force as confident award. And in 2019, we managed to get the bronze, and in 2020, the silver. We haven't started looking at the gold yet because the amount of paperwork you have to go through to get there. And also, Mark Blessing was awarded the Points of Light Award where he got a personal thank you letter from Boris Johnson when he was the Prime Minister at the time. Yeah. We'll hear a little more from Malcolm towards the end of the video. For now though, the majority of my Spitfire is now complete and massed appropriately. It's time to start painting. I thought this would be a great project to highlight the use of spray cans. First up, I primed the model using some Humbrol No. 1 grey primer, working in light coats from left to right to give a good surface for the next layers of paint to stick to. Hobbycraft matte white was sprayed onto the entire model as the next colour layer, again working in light coats to build up the colour. Unfortunately, I didn't have a red rattle can, so instead loaded this red paint into my airbrush, having masked the white areas to prevent overspray. It was applied in a simple air racer paint scheme. The blades of the propeller were painted with some black acrylic, and now it's time to work on the decals. The decals I have are produced by Models for Heroes, and whilst they're not the highest of quality compared to professional decal companies, they're not bad. The transfer film covers the entire sheet, so each decal has to be cut out individually. When that was done, they were soaked in warm water to release them from the paper, and Humbrol decal fix was brushed onto the relevant areas on the model. More decal fix will be brushed on top of the transfers to help soften them into the surface details. These transfers work best when applied to a light surface, which is why I decided to go for a white and red paint scheme for this model. With the transfers now applied and fully cured, some K-Colors matte varnish was sprayed onto the entire model to protect the transfers and give them a uniform finish. The engine exhausts were painted with some gunmetal paint and then glued into place on the nose of the model. Finishing touches include adding the landing light to the hole on the bottom of the model, popping the propeller into the hole on the nose, carefully peeling the masking tape away from the cockpit canopy, and installing the mount for the 3D printed base in the holes I drilled out on the bottom of the plane. And that's pretty much it for this build. Not a very long or complicated project, which makes a more unique and interesting subject for the display cabinet, whilst also helping to support a good cause. Realistically, this kind of project can be completed in a couple of evenings, especially considering the easy construction of this kit, low part count, simple paint scheme, and basic techniques used to complete it. 
Naturally, you could decide to make this as complicated as you wanted, if you felt like doing something a little more complex. The only area of this build I wish I'd spent a bit more time working on was the masking. The red and white on the fuselage has a slight fuzzy edge, and I did have to tidy up a little paint bleed off camera as a result. This could be down to the tape not being applied too well and having a slight fuzzy edge to it. I could have avoided this by cutting the tape a bit cleaner to give a sharper edge and then pressed it down a bit more. What do you think of this custom Air Racer Spitfire though? Let me know down in the comments. Before we wrap this video up, it's time to hear from Malcolm again and he's going to tell you how you can help support Models for Heroes. How can you help us? The very simple way of helping us is to talk about what we do and talk about mental health and talk about how important it is to help others. You could, uh, well, if you could donate any unstarted kits and tools and things like that to us, that'd be wonderful. Um, if you felt like running a fundraising event as part of your channel or your group or, or a 24-hour build or something, uh, that'd be wonderful. Um, you can also sell on eBay for charity, which is part of Models for Heroes. You search for eBay, you can send us some money for any sales you do. So if you have any kits that you've built, you're done with, you want to get rid of them, you can eBay them and then put 10% for M4H if you wanted to. I don't know if you've noticed, on the side, on the side of the fixed kits is the flying hours. Now, if you're not part of the club, if you're not using those flying hours, if you've got a car stack box aside, just cut that out and keep them and then give them to one of our volunteers at a model show, pop them in the post to us, because we can use them, because Dale converts them into actual kits for us. Thanks to both Malcolms at Models for Heroes for giving this presentation at the Airfix Factory Day, and I hope my build of this custom air racing Spitfire has helped raise a bit more awareness of the good work this charity does. I'll post a link to the Models for Heroes website down in the description box if you feel you would like to support them in some way. Quick shout out to my channel members and patrons for the extra support they give my channel, allowing me to complete fun little projects like this, thanks to these guys on screen. Take a look at the info under the video if you'd like to know more about how you can get involved. If you enjoyed this video, dropping a like would be greatly appreciated, and if you're new here, subscribing with notifications on will mean you never miss a modelling upload. Finally, a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.